And uh, we will go ahead and get started. Um, welcome, everyone. I am Rebecca Jez. I am an assistant professor in the Department of Learning and Teaching in Souls. I'm also the faculty lead for the USD Black Lives Matter and Beyond Social Justice and Advocacy Series. And we are so incredibly excited to welcome you to our fourth Healing Through the Arts um, Artistic Expression Salon. Uh, this one is really discussing about the need for us to create sustainable change. Um, this came out of many discussions that we've had uh, around the fact that um, we had a lot of attention um, towards the Black Lives Matter movement, a reawakening of it in the spring of 2020 when this group first was formed. Um, it came out of the televised uh, murders of uh, people like uh, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, um, and it was a response um, from the Department of Learning and Teaching, um, PhD in Education for Social Justice um, group to um, the murders that were happening. And we really wanted to do something to make sure that we were living out social justice rather than um, just writing or talking about it. Uh, we really wanted to move our um, words into action. And um, so we began by co-creating a solidarity statement and an action plan. We figured that something would happen and we would continue some events, but we actually didn't imagine that it would get to the level that it is today. And we're really honored to be able to work together uh, to provide these different events where we highlight um, the work of uh, people in our community. And our community is not just USD, but it really is um, San Diego, California, USA, and even the globe. And so we, we, we do feel honored to be a part of this. Um, when we think about what we wanted to do with this space, when we were first coming up with this, we really wanted to create a place where we could learn, where we could dialogue, and where we could work on healing and um, and doing this at each level. Um, uh, one of the things that I really reflect about, um, have reflected on as we've been doing these types of events is uh, the importance of um of creating a space for um, really processing uh, the racial violence that happens around the world. And um, so some of what we'll be talking about today is even um, the, the crisis in the Middle East. And so um, this is really a space for us to bring these topics together. And if there is something that you would like to see happen, please reach out to us and join us in our efforts of creating um, additional spaces. Um, the reason why we also use the Artistic Expression Salon is because sometimes uh, words written or verbally uh, shared are not enough to really explain what is going on in our hearts and our minds and our souls. And, and so we wanted to open this up to anyone providing whatever expression style that they have um, to the community so that we could really work on the healing space. So thank you for coming here. Uh, we are really excited to connect tonight and celebrate and um, work towards healing. Um, so I am going to hand it off to Dominic, who will introduce our land acknowledgement. Sorry about that, everyone. My computer is freezing up. Um, I'm so happy today to um, introduce this uh really a world-renowned artist. I'm so happy she's here with us today. I'll read a little bit about um, her, and I'm sure you will discover a whole lot more about um, uh, Carmen Linares Kahlo. So she's a self-taught artist, self artist uh, muralist, and fourth-generation spiritual practitioner of indigenous healing arts. Um, Carmen was born in San Diego, California, descendant of Comanche and Mexican indigenous lineage. Um, she is also a Chicano Park muralist, volunteer, and advocate of traditional cultural arts. Um, she was also the former secretary of the Chicano uh, Park Steering Committee. So without further ado, um, there's a whole lot more you will discover and know about her, um, but I will let her take this over because I don't want to overshadow uh, the great person that she is, and we're so happy to have her at the Social Justice and Advocacy Series. Thank you. 
Carmen. Thank you very much, Dominic, and um, everyone for inviting me. This sounds like such a beautiful endeavor, and it's just something that um, is really needed. Um, my name is uh, Carmen. Um, I go by Kahlo in the community. Uh, that is just a term of endearment that people call me. Um, and uh, most of the murals that I have done, I started painting in the early 90s. And basically what took me there was uh, my relationship with the indigenous um, and the um, injustices that many uh, had endured. Uh, the picture that you see here is um, a mural called Omenaje. Uh, and I painted this mural, um, I think it was 1999, 2000. And it's a homage piece uh, to the people that died crossing the border during <laughs> Operation Gatekeeper. A lot of the work that I do um, is spiritual. So I always start with um, my acknowledgement and I have here my, um, my, this is the first time that I do um, an acknowledgement this way. So I wanna share my presence, my elements and um, the compassion that that I uh, breathe every morning that I wake up to when I give uh, thanks to the four directions and creator. Um, before we do that, I would like to have a moment of silence for the people um, in Acapulco um, who have uh, suffered the hurricane over these last couple of days. So just a small little um, moment of silence for them before I begin, please. Thank you. As I light my my fire and I have here, I usually burn um, copal, which is a tree uh, resin that I traditionally use with other herbs. Today, I'm only using um, sage that came from the Kumeyaay Reservation. Everything that I have here pretty much, except for the water and the fire, were gifts from the Kumeyaay. And uh, with that, I want to acknowledge the four directions, Tlawislampa, Siwantlampa, Wislampa, Mitlampa, Tonansi. I thank and welcome each and every one of you into this holy space uh, that we have here in our hearts. With love and compassion, I extend gratitude of um, gratitude and enormous, um, enormous love to our Kumiai our Kumeyaay friends, our Kumeyaay nation. Um, I work closely with the Kumeyaay people. Most of the murals that I have done, somehow they have always been involved and I thank them for their stewardship. I thank them for their solidarity. I thank them for their stories, their colors, their culture, their songs, uh, their dances, and uh, for sharing with me uh, one of the most precious gifts that I could receive is uh, the full story of the Kumiai creation story, which was my my uh, most recent mural painted about three years ago at Chicano Park. It's at, that pillar uh, is located right across the street from the pillar that you see here. And with that, um, I want to honor them, um, my friendship with them. I want to honor the land. I want to honor each step that we take every day that we walk on this on this land with peace, with love, with consideration for everyone that we see, for everyone that we see on the streets, for all the people of the world that all this love and all the smoke that I speak of in this moment be reached out to them. With that, I close with the Omeyokan where opposites come together and harmony is one. Thank you. We are called to act and to defend the rights and liberties of Black, Indigenous, and people of color, including those marginalized due to their sexual orientation, differing abilities, and gender identities. These often unheard voices who live within the American tapestry exist in collective oppression and are often excluded from full participation as citizens in our democracy. They have been profiled, detained, and denied their rights, their humanity asphyxiated. 
Thank you. And I'll just point out that every um, every event, we always read part of our solidarity statement. And I have put the link to our website that houses the full statement for, um, for everyone. Um, and next, we will have Xavier. Um, sorry, my mic was off. Um, so about the ACES, um, it's the next event. It's going to happen um, middle June. And it's about the Middle East. Middle East um, situation that is happening right now. So basically it's gonna be a place to learn, listen and heal. Um, we still like preparing the event, but more information about the panel um, is gonna send out, it's gonna be sent out your way very soon. But basically it's an opportunity to heal, um, be more compassionate uh, with our friends, especially when it comes to peace building and peacemaking. Um, so yeah, um, stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you. And Dominic, will you do the overview? Yeah, so the overview of this virtual gallery, um, I read it a little bit about our call to action um, that's in our PhD social justice program. And it reads um, that we, the students and faculty from the University of San Diego, believe that education is a conduit which can break the cycle of racism and give rise to social justice. Uh, we denounce and stand together or stand in opposition to uh, systemic racism that has led to inequities within our community. This uh, group started as a response to the grief and anger we've experienced after George Floyd's and Breonna Taylor's murders, just to name a few in June 2020. Acknowledging the pain systemic racism uh, is inflicting uh, upon um, oppressed communities, our commitments have uh, since expanded to addressing the need for so, for justice oriented action and conscious healing. So our virtual gallery is about healing. It's about healing through the arts and healing through expression um, because that's the way that we communicate, we talk, we share, we listen and we learn. So very glad to start this virtual gallery and um, yes, you'll see the magnificent things. Thank you everyone. And now without ver uh, further ado, we will have Gabby, who is going to take us through um, and introduce our, our different artists as our moderator for the opening. Amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. Jez and the team. I'll just start off by saying uh, my, thanks, everyone. My name is Gabby Royal. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm a first year PhD student in education for social justice. Very grateful for the opportunity to moderate today's session. Um, we will start off with our first artist submission from Jenna Murphy. Um, and I don't believe that Jenna is able to be here with us today. So I'm happy to read some of the highlights of the artist statement. And you can see to your left the, um, the contribution that the artist has made here. Um, so I drew this in the summer of 2020, which for me was an extremely tumultuous and confusing time. The world was falling apart in front of our eyes, and I felt like the girl in the photo, needing just to lie down for a little and take it all in. I also felt a sliver of light peeking through, protests, movements, rev revolutions all happening at once. I felt like things were unraveling in a way they've needed to for a long time, and there was hope. And we do, I believe, have uh, Jean Cornwell with us, um, who will represent their art on the bronze sculpture. Jean, are you with us? And if not, I'm happy to give some reflections here. Okay. Um, so the bronze sculpture, um, the artist statement, uh, the artist statement is as such, breaking stereotypes and limits in imagining. Okay, and I'll introduce our artist here. Um, so uh, Sierra uh, Meselhorn, and art entitled The Unknown Backbone. And Sierra, are you with us in the virtual room today? I am. Hi, please, um, if you don't mind sharing your statement and also a little bit about you and what inspired your work. Of course. Uh, so my name is Sierra Malov Meselhorn. Uh, in my piece, you will see that within the bold lines is colored pictures. This represents what we know. In the background, there are black and white photos. This represents all our country was built on that no one talks about. The fact that our country and economy was built off the mass incarceration and enslavement of people of color. Uh, I was born in a very, very small uh, Southern town uh, in Illinois, where there was not very big variations of people. 
a lot of people that I grew up with looked like me. And I came to San Diego for college and I had no idea what ethnic studies was. I knew what ethnicity was. I knew what that was. I had no idea that that was a class. I didn't know that was a major, minor at all. Um, and I saw that it was a requirement for one of these things. And I was trying to fill in a blank and there was intro to ethnic studies. And I ended up taking the course and I absolutely fell in love with it. It was something that I wish that I had learned in my hometown. It was things that I carry with me everywhere I love to go. It teaches me more than just what the history books are telling us. And I, this piece was inspired mainly because it started out as an art project. It started out as having to do an art piece for this class. Um, and we visited Chicano Park. And it was really important to me because all of those different pillars had different stories. But if you put them all together, it tells a com combined story of so many people of overlapping experiences. And I thought that it was really important for me to incorporate those pieces. I have had very few art classes. I do it on the side. It's something I enjoy to do and helps me kind of process things also. But I work with collages. It's my chosen media if that's how you say it. But I think that it's very important to see that there are things that were not taught in history and to put that down on paper and to show people that there's so much more than what history books choose to tell us. And that's where this started out with. And visiting Chicano Park just kind of boosted that for me. And that's a little bit about my piece. It's beautiful and it's very inspiring. Was there anything that surprised you? A lot surprised me in the beginning. Uh, seeing these photos and seeing and hearing the history, there was a lot of things that I had no idea actually happened. And I was like, that's not what I was taught. That's not what I was told. And doing my own research later on and seeing, okay, yeah, that did happen. And what I was taught is just the, the white history, the pick and choosing, cherry picking history which I think is really important for all of us to kind of understand is that history books aren't always complete and not always right. Thank you so much for those beautiful reflections and for sharing your piece with us. Thank you. All right. I guess we'll go to the next one. Okay, so we have um, Amsu uh, Nguyen and this piece is entitled Dentistry. And so I'll just read some of the reflections, the artist statement here. Here, teeth represent the negative and positive aspects one associates with change and advocacy. For the latter part, the teeth symbolize the all-encompassing rigidity of institutions and society that block equity and overlook long-term inclusivity. In a positive lens, teeth typically represent power and agency. The jagged shapes in red are an opportunity for change, constant growth, and learning. Aspects of social justice, I think, are most important. Thank you for the submission. I think we'll head to the next piece now. Okay, so the next piece by um, CJ Maloney uh, entitled Shift of Tides. Uh, Shift of Tides is a brief compilation of photos and poems highlighting the power of nature and healing our collective soul as we navigate the uncharted waters of justice. Thank you, CJ, for your contribution. Okay. Uh, and the next one here, we have a submission from Julia Yates, um, a piece entitled A Message for a School Library. Okay, so Julia writes, this piece was originally created as concept art for a mural that would be painted on a set of windows in a high school library to promote it as welcome and accepting, welcoming and accepting space for any and all students on campus. A parent complaint resulted in the mural's removal shortly after it was painted, but amazing individuals in our school district administration met with the school's library committee to determine proper steps to reinstall the design as the banner hung in the library. Julia, thank you so much for your contributions. Beautiful art. Okay, so I think we're on to Ryan, um, Ryan Babers, uh, entitled Justice Unite. Ryan, are you in the room with us today? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Hi, Ryan. Thank you so much. Would you like to share, uh, you have a few minutes here to share a little bit about the background on your piece and what inspired you, what surprised you, and just a little bit about your background too. Uh, sure. Um, so uh, 
I, you know, about the same time, 2020, um, you know, a lot of crazy stuff was going on and, um, you know, I was getting to the point where it's just, you know, it was, it was, I was, it was really starting to affect me a lot. And, um, I hadn't really done, really done a lot of art like, um, like this, where I really, I, I have a really hard time, uh, expressing things like, um, like in type it, like in a word form and, um, art has always been my thing. Um, and I always wanted to find a way to try to express myself more. Um, I also do, I also dance and that's another way of kind of expressing myself. Um, but through art, I was always looking for something and it got to the point where it was just like, you know, this is, I have to release this kind of, uh, emotion that's been trapped inside. And, uh, this is one of the pieces and it's really a reflective, uh, for me because, um, all of these people are representative of me and I've always been trying to figure find, um, you know, I always think about that in the back of my head that, you know, any one of these people, you know, could be me. And, um, it, it, it just, it was at that right time that I had to create this piece and, um, a little bit about the the piece itself is that I took my uh, I did a self portrait of my hand and I I just I drew my fist and um, my I I typically do a dot art so like stippling and um, so I wanted to have that kind of representation and it's actually one of several uh, different pieces I did so it's kind of in a series and I also did I don't know how well you can see it but I also did a uh, a George Floyd, uh, I can't breathe, kind of like a, like almost like a little poster thing, and then um, a couple of sketches of uh, Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Aubrey. So I don't know how well you guys can see that. Uh, Amazing. But, um, it was just how I was feeling at the time, and I, I just felt like I needed to say something, and um, you know, it, it was at that point where I couldn't keep it. Um, I kind of hold it that kind of feeling I had to let people know and um, hopefully more people it reaches more people that way I love it Ryan I mean I gotta say so much of this really stood off the page for me personally and I there's so much here and I think there are so many layers in this this work so I love it when the artists are able to represent it was there anything here in terms of your art that was like a call to action to promote advocacy or change? Um, I think it was just, just um, kind of like the just my feeling, like, because I had been, like, a, I've been just watching it all happen, and I've had my own experiences, personal experiences happen, and I've never really um, done anything about it with my art. And I've always been trying to find, you know, what, what should I be doing with my art? And is, you know, should I be doing it like this and or that? And it just, it's just one of those things where I just had to, you know, it was enough that I had to start saying something with my art, and give it, give it more purpose to something, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sharing uh, sharing the stage with us and sharing a little bit about your process as an artist. We appreciate your contributions to this. Thank, thank you. you. All right, incredible. So we're going to move now to uh, Zoe Lestick. And this piece is entitled, My Skin is Not a Threat. I'm not, I'm not certain if Zoe is with us here today virtually, so I'll go ahead and read the artist statement. Um, for the acrylic painting titled, My Skin is Not a Threat, I completed that a few months after the death of George Floyd and all the civil unrest in our nation over equality. These events made me question if there was a difference now than compared to the past when similar social unrest has occurred. My younger generation is here. Uh, that is the difference. And I hope we continue to stand and fight for social justice, social media, peaceful rallies, art, and much more ways that we can continue to make a difference. Thank you so much, Zoe. Okay, so we'll move to uh, a piece by Chloe Lustig. 
And this is entitled A Symbolic Flight, Unity and Abundance in the Pursuit of Justice. So I will just share, um, just for the sake of time, some of the highlights from the artist statement. And then feel free to go back at any point and see some of the art and uh, some of the, the, the highlights of the art pieces that will be circulating. A symbolic flight is a powerful symbolism of celebration, unity, advocacy, and healing emerging, intertwined with the collective voices of a community. The white dove, universally recognized as a symbol of peace and harmony, embodies a collective desire for unity and celebrates the diversity within the community. The inclusion of fruit representing abundance and nourishment signifies the celebration of life and shared prosperity among community members. This drawing advocates for equality, justice, and unity, emphasizing the importance of acknowledgement and respecting differences while fostering togetherness. Chloe, thank you so much for your contribution to this effort. Okay, now we are transitioning to uh, Jacobs Institute STEM Academy Superstars with uh, pieces entitled Reducing Inequity, Turning Passion into Action. And I do believe this is a collage, um, actually a series of different uh, collages. I think they, they call them a community quilt on the website. And it's a collection of ideas, interests, and passion focused on reducing inequities in the world. The amazing STEM superstars that participate in the 2020 uh, STEM Academy have used their voice to bring recognition and agency to various injustices. We invite you to view, be inspired, and take action. They challenge us to join championing for our youth, transforming their voices into instruments of change. You can see below the website and you can go through and click through the beautiful collage and beautiful um, representations of the art listed. All right, and so now we have actually a submission from Liliana uh, Gayton, and this is uh, a piece entitled Mental Health Case Manager. And so this is this is a poem, and I do believe we'll have this poem uh, linked as well, so uh, folks can have access to it, but the artist's statement is, my poetry is like water to my soul. As vital as it is to remain hydrated is how I feel about writing. It's a necessary, it is necessary to get through the growing pains of life. Poetry allows a voice and room to say the things we may hide in our hearts and sometimes become poison to us and cause bitterness. Thank you so much for the contribution. Okay, so that's fine. We have a, uh, a poem, a submission from Cynthia Vasquez uh, Miboka. And this contribution, um, this piece of art is meant to reflect um, healing and self-affirmation as a Black woman in Latin America. So thank you so much, Cynthia, for your contribution. Okay, we have, I believe I received a chat that Lizette Alvarez is with us today. Uh, and- Hi, there... yes. Hi, it's time to introduce transitions. And was that if you would like to introduce your um, your art and just tell us a little bit about yourself, what inspired you as an artist and what it all means, please bring it to life for us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, thanks, Dominique and the rest of the team for bringing in this together. So I shot 2018, the piece, it's a four piece photography submission. It's uh, called Transitions uh, for photographs of the Trans Pride March in 2018 in San Francisco. At the time, uh, we were transitioning through a lot of politics, uh, a lot of gentrification as the whole world and country is. And um, uh, we ended up the rally uh, in the middle of San Francisco. And there were a number of embraces and kisses from all the participants. Uh, and it was just so gorgeous because in the background, we have um, Aunt Charlie's, the one of the oldest like gay bar uh, areas in San Francisco that are still left in this country and around the world. And um, a lot of the politicians were there. So everyone came together as one. So I felt it defied what I was trying to capture and it captured in the essence was regardless of age or gender or race or um, socioeconomic, uh, you know, entities, everyone came together as one um, through love and, and through peace and in and, and that march. So that's what we were um, 
trying to embrace and capture. So thank you for having me. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. And I, you know, I've been going off script asking a couple of questions here, Lizette, but sure. I know art can be tell our stories, own our stories, and feel proud of that. So how do you feel like your art pushes our boundaries and ways of thinking about the topic? I think definitely um I, you know, I'm I'm born and raised in uh in Los Angeles and being there as a queer woman of color and coming out physically non-apparent, I appear always as heteronormative or heterosexual. So I, I will go into my community, into queer spaces, and, you know, people will say, may I help you? Um, like I'm in the wrong place and uh, nobody is in the wrong place. We're all in this place together in this world. Um, so it was really fascinating to sort of have a, a different lens through it as I, I get that as myself. So I, I wondered about others. Yeah. And so that I was, I was trying to portray and, and bring that back. <laughs> Bearing, we appreciate you. Thank you. All right, we'll do Becky Carter and their pieces uh, entitled "Recognize Education and Learning." Real, uh, Devin, are you with us? Yes, can you hear me? Hey, I can hear you. Thanks so much for joining. Would you like to introduce yourself and your art? Yes. Um, so is it okay if I perform the art? I'm not sure if I sent it in. Yes, a thousand percent. We love a live performance. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So I'll just begin by introducing myself really quickly. Uh, so I'm Devin Carter from Cleveland, Ohio, originally. Um, to be honest, I grew up in the hood. Education was not something that was on my radar. Um, I ended up getting a basketball scholarship to Lehigh University. Um, when I got there, I tore my ACLs on academic probation and um, almost got kicked out of school. Uh, I got one opportunity, and long story short, I ended up getting my doctorate uh, at Lehigh uh, in special education, and I'm a professor at the University of Akron uh, in Ohio. Uh, and so recognized education and learning is actually an intervention that I created essentially to make school cool and a part of the culture uh, because, you know, education actually saved my life. Um, unfortunately, I think a lot of times in these inner cities, nerds are seen as like, you know, um, like uncool. And, and that's unfortunate because they become the leaders of our country. Um, and so, you know, as a proud nerd, uh, I decided to, you know, get into this uh, space of, you know, what, what's a part of our culture. And so you have, you know, acting, sports and, and entertainment, right? Uh, these are the types of things that uh, essentially influence our, our youth. Uh, and so I wanted to use music as a way um, to, to penetrate our, our kids' minds and to see that, you know, you can be a cool nerd. Uh, and so this um, poem, I would say, uh, is entitled Lifelines, and I'll just go for it. I woke up this morning to a sunrise, the kind that shines its light just right, bright enough to hide the dark times. And as my queen watches her sunrise, little does she know it's the beauty inside her that keeps me alive. As I continue to strive to grow, I know it's time to let my own light show because I was told there's nothing enlightening about shrinking so other people don't fold. So here y'all go, blessed with Cleveland's finest. I swear this message is going to be perfect timing because I'm going to reach my homies in the rough and I'm going to pull out some diamonds. And I was also told it don't matter what the shoes is because if you can fit them, then it really don't matter what the rules is. Yeah, and I know this life is ruthless because truth is half of these people don't know what the truth is but the other half do, but when it comes to the light, people start to act clueless. But I'm gonna let my life line shine anyway. I'm gonna make sure all my life lines penetrate the beating heart of the same people that feel the hate, so that one day it's gonna all become perfect time and that all I was trying to do is become a diamond just like you. Uh, and so that's a poem that I wrote. Um, I appreciate you guys for letting me share this. Uh, this is something that's pretty new for me. This is only my second year uh, in education, so I'm, I'm still learning as I go. Uh, but thank you so much for the opportunity. Devin, well, first of all, uh, mic drop moment. That was amazing. And I saw a lot of hands clapping, a lot of heart emojis, lots of love in the chat. So thank you so much for that. And tell me, how long have you been, how long have you been a poet? I mean, that's amazing. I honestly... Thank you. So I honestly just started this year um, because, again, I, I wanted to figure out how to really get this interve intervention to be impactful to the students. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I felt like music was just a great way. I mean, it, it inspired me and influenced me a lot growing up. Yeah. Uh, and so I just said, I try it. Uh, I'm not sure how good I am yet, but I'm working on it. No, it's awesome. Thank you so much. And I, I've got this written down. Uh, Let your lifeline shine. Amazing. So thank you. Thank you for those mic drop moments and for sharing your, your work with us. We really appreciate you. Incredible. So now we'll move on to B.R. Brown. Uh, and so we have a poem and a, a contribution uh, from B.R. Brown entitled Black Magic. And artist statement is change starts with acceptance. All right, we'll go to the next submission. For us, it takes a tragedy. My people, my people, we got to get it right. Okay. Great, we have more more poems coming our way. It's awesome. So we have um, a, a submission from A Loud Whisper, uh, and this piece is entitled "Yes, We Can." And the and the second piece is "And the Gray." And so the submission is, "The art speaks for itself." So let's yeah. let the art speak for itself. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Is the artist with us? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, you can do it better. You can tell your story better than me. I apologize. Thank you so much for joining. Mine, um, yeah. the piece and a little bit about you and your process. Yeah, no problem. Um, my name is Nick. Uh, I go the only in this space am I allowed to whisper? Uh, but uh, I was a cop for, for uh, six and a half years. Up until 2020, one of the last times I wore the uniform is at the George Floyd uh, parade. I'm now a minister and a spiritual guide, um, along with uh, selling fine jewelry. But anyway, um, I was just uh, very, I was a very loud advocate when I was in a uniform for law enforcement. I was loud and wrong. So it was equally now that I get loud and right. Um, it's it. it in the port in the rest will speak for itself. I won't keep you because the because there is it um one of them is kind of lengthy. So we're good to go. Thank you. Nick, take your time. This is this is our space. Our space. So take take the time and if mm-hmm. you know I'm sure you have some reflections after we listen to it. So would you like That's to like, hit the first one, top left? Uh, let's start with the bottom one to get the long one out the way. <laughs> All right. All right, let's hit it. Thank you so much. No problem. The light. And the person next to us has to be strong for us to have the might. Somebody has to start swinging for us to put up a fight. Now tell me if I'm wrong or if you know that I'm right. Barack Obama, yes, we can, our first black president. And in some neighborhoods, we get to get a black resident. The KKK is having a meeting is what I heard today. Land of the people, exactly what do you have to say? It took some time when we got two black coaches in the Super Bowl. So like the saying says, it's time to rock and roll. Jazz is already stolen, but they can't take away our soul. Like Martin Luther King had a dream. I have a goal to push past the statistics who I'm supposed to be, to be represented as an individual, just a human being. Land of America. America, land of the free. So while we still stuck in bondage, bondage cannot see. And now they want to take away the N-word. No disrespect, but to me that's absurd. Sure it's what we were called back when lynching was in, but now it's a formal greeting we use for our friends and our kin. Nigga, please, is what I use on a regular basis. The meaning of the word changed with the change of faces. So part of our history we'll never forget. Do not dwell on the past, forgive and move on from it. Nigga would come up and step to me. I know you don't like it, but that's what he chose to be. When he became that ignorant, they like to call us. And look at the world. It's no way we can fuss. They declare racism is over, but it has yet to die. Come on, black America, let's not be led by a lie. The same ones who took it away brought it right back. And now we want to act all gullible like we on the right track. We say we want this and deserve that. And it's cool to be labeled as a dummy and not a college frat. We stand up to men, respect to get mad when it's not given. They say live life to the fullest of black America, let's start living. We want justice to be served, but we refuse to vote. We want to be filled with knowledge, but over the books we chose the remote. Look at the prison rate and the prison overflow. So many niggas, excuse me, brothers filled the joint. Some had to get let go. I get on my knees and pray. Wonder if they praying for themselves. Look at the records on the libraries and more excels. Since when is it right for a mother to bury her son? Conceived in a life where no one cares before you're born, your life is done. It takes money to be a part of that club and that service league and to stop being about the people and used to intrigue us to believing that we actually care. Led by more lies in my eyes, you cannot stare. Gandhi believed in non-violence, Malcolm X disagreed. Mr. X is in his grave and how long it took Gandhi to eat? Domestic arguments and violence fill our streets. And we wonder why a law we have yet to defeat. Martin Luther King, thank God, and said we were free at last. To me, that's a prophecy that has yet to pass. For us, it takes a tragedy to see the light. 
and the person next to us has to be strong for us to have the might. Somebody has to start swinging for us to put up and fight. Now tell me if I'm wrong or if you know that I'm right. My people, my people, we got to get it right today because tomorrow there's no sequel. And I'm just waiting and praying for the day that I get to be treated as an equal. But we're living in a world where that day won't come. And it's more than black and white that we're running from. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Lots of, <laughs> lots of claps. And <laughs> love. Nick. Appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. All right, and tell us about, is, is this your stage name, A Loud Whisper, or is that just for, for today's conversation? Oh, uh, I guess it, it's a, it, it's my stage name, yeah, you know, uh, I've been a po I've been doing poetry a long time, never really shared it, like that first poem I probably wrote back in 2008 or 9, it's just still so relevant, mm -hmm. um, but uh yeah, this this the last three years from twenty uh from twenty twenty to now a lot has a lot has transpired. So that loud whisper really comes more from us uh, spirituality. I lead with that, like I said, I'm a minister and spirit, spiritual God first and foremost. And uh, truthfully, uh, the whisper part of that is uh, source. The communication source gives to me, and the loud I'm supposed to be loud with it. So it really is my truth. Um, uh, also during this time, I. Uh, I this three years really has been a rebirth or a, a rebirth for me. And it was a, it was important that I I speak against I speak against um, I speak I speak out often all the time for the cause. I don't usually do it in an artistic manner. I'm usually very blunt, blatant to the point. But um, I wanted to reach more people and to reach more people. You get into more spaces. And how do you do that? So I've just had these things in an archive now, and that's not helping anybody with it not being uh, said out loud. So here I am just out loud. I love it. And, you know, there was a certain rhythm behind your poetry too. And it felt it, it had this, uh, it had this sense of urgency behind, behind mm -hmm. the words and your, the tone behind it. It, it felt like you wanted, it was a call the action like to move right so it's movement and that's kind of also just what I experienced from it personally listening to it for for the first time here but it felt like it was a call to action and a sense of like urgency behind it and, and you know um that's is that's very true I am um, be because uh because I've been in these spaces for quite some time though I appreciate them always so much I appreciate people get like-minded people coming together and talking about it I love it but it uh, that can only do so much like-minded people coming into a room con confirming what we already know is is doing it's going to only do so much it really does take action it really is urgent it really cannot wait until tomorrow it really cannot wait until later until today it really does have to be right now so um i am anxious i, I i'm so i'm happy that the tone of that was that because um it's not the revolution will be we're in it and it's on us we are it, the the prayer that we're praying is us you know what i'm saying so there is a sense of urgency there. So I appreciate that that came up. For sure, for sure. Can I felt I, chill. Dr. Jess. <laughs> um, I, I, Nick, you were, you did the intersectionality video too, right? Yes, yes, yes. All I right, did. I'm going to put this in the chat because she's now, <laughs> this is her second, second time with us. We actually <laughs> did a video two years ago um, where she was one of the people that talked about intersectionality and how it really impacts um, her life. So please, these are the, the past YouTube videos. It was a two part series then where we had the video came out and then the, the video release. And then we actually had you as a panelist. So um, check out our YouTube page and thank you so much for coming back. I, as, as soon as I saw you, I was like, wait, I know you. <laughs> so hey, well, Rebecca, thank you always for you uh, thank you, thinking of me. What's thank that? you always for thinking of me. Um, I, every time I get an email, I, I I can't believe it. I'm always shocked. Like, oh, I'm still on the list. So I appreciate it. I want to show up for you all as much as I possibly can. I, I always oh, we love you here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. All right. So our next submission is from Deborah Co. And it's entitled Collective Liberation. The artist's uh, statement is as follows. This work is a reflection on being a child of the diaspora and learning what it means regarding collective liberation. Thank you, Deborah. Mm -hmm. 
to our next submission, Lovia Delva with The Price of Freedom. Lovia, are you in the room with us? Hi, everyone. I am. One second, Lovia. let me just fix my mic. Thank you so much. Uh, Lovia is a dear friend, so I'm actually pretty stoked. I'm pretty excited to hear this one. Tell us about yourself and your work. All right, um, a little bit about myself. My name is Lovia Delva. I'm a Haitian American um, prayer woman I'm living in New York. Um, I'm also a nurse. Um, I'm a director of nursing. Of, I oversee urgent cares. And um, I find my own self-healing um, as um, a, like using the arts as a form of for my own self-healing. And I I just really wanted to go forward with reading a poem that I did write in terms of um, healing and freedom and um, just social justices um, and adversity we all face day to day in our all of our lives. Um, so it's it's my it's my form of release of you know the anger and the fear and all the different emotions and feelings that come about each and all, each one of us as we go on every day. Um, let me go ahead and have the poem out. I'm gonna also show myself. Hi everyone. <laughs> See you. This is my first time doing this. I'm a bit nervous. Um, I write a lot and I just really have a great support system who always pushed me to do these amazing um, platforms. All right. I've been in search of freedom, like the last drop of water in the Sahara Desert. I've been in search of freedom, like a baby's first breath. I've been in search of freedom, like my faith leading a life filled with interjections. I've been in search of freedom, wishing and praying under the stars for a taste of forever. I've been in search of freedom, idolizing objects as its representative, only to find me at a dead end. I've been in search of freedom, feeling through my anguish and internal warfare between the familiar and my primitive knowing. I missed it. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, oh my gosh. Feeling through my anguish and internal warfare between the familiar and my primitive knowing of a superior life. Killing has been plural, a duality like my life on earth, a journey of self-acceptance, making the best of the reality I was given. I've been in search of freedom, running and searching for myself, surpassing my odds, healing the price of freedom from a Black queer immigrant. So just poem I wanted to write. So thank you so much for having me on this platform. Um, thank you, Gabby. Well, yeah, thank you, Rebecca. You you you've crushed it, Logan. Did I really? <laughs> So I, I, I know you had some nerves coming into it, but I think yeah. you're an amazing artist and thank you also for your, the work that you've done as a frontline, you know, person going through the pandemic. I know just all your contributions to our community and it just means a lot. So yeah. Are there any other comments or reflections you have on this that you want to share with the world? Yeah. I mean, those pic this picture I picked um, was actually shot by a well-known photographer um, called Hollis King. Um, he was a very pro activist for the Black Lives Movement. Um, he he's also from the Caribbean immigrant coming here, and it's like you know the idea of unity, the idea of all of us healing individually to come together to create change. And this is really what I feel like everyone in the world needs to to end war, to have, show more love and empathy for one another, and. I just feel like, you know, through the arts, through expressing the one true authentic self. And I feel like only that, you know, like having a platform like this where so many people can have that outreach that we all need right now. Beautiful. So, well, thank you're you so not much. alone. You got some um some shout outs in the chat. Hello, my Haitian sister. We're here with you, says Dahlia. Uh, Zoe says that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing, Lovia. So we appreciate you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks for having me. All right, and so we have uh, we're we're actually getting close. We're actually getting close to the end of our salon, which makes me sad. 
This was amazing. Um, so with that, we're going to get over to our last couple of submissions here. Michaela Carter, and we have uh, a change is going to come. All right, we can kick it off. I was born by the river in a little tent, no, just like that river. I've been running ever since. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know a change is going to come. It's been too hard living, but I'm afraid to die, because I don't know what's up there beyond the sky. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know a change's gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. Incredible. Thank you, Michaela. Beautiful. All right, we'll go to our next. Our next piece by Matthew Holloway, the second. Matthew, I, I've heard that you've joined us. Um, you're, please come to the virtual stage and introduce your piece, Coming Home, Restory US. Yes, hello everyone. So this is called Coming Home, Restoring Us. This is a digital testimony project that I started uh, during my time in graduate school that we are releasing this fall. So, so far we released the portraits, one of which you're seeing right now. This is a portrait true portraits of two of the undergrad students who we interviewed. My background is in sort of digital storytelling and documentary work. So was really frustrated and upset that since the pandemic, we really haven't had a public conversation around the enormity of conflict and crisis that seem to be coming every week and every month, particularly not acknowledging or publicly memorializing the 1 million lives that were lost due to COVID in this country alone. And so I decided um, as a way of processing my own deaths in my family with the loss of my grandmother and my grandfather, uh, I wanted to connect young people together to start talking about their experiences, but using artifacts from their lives that help them tell that story in a more trauma healing way. And then recognizing the one, the reason why we haven't really spoke publicly and memorialized is because uh, we really don't know how to confront the conversation without um, the grief overtaking us. So we used artistic expression to allow these young people to tell their stories in a more cathartic way. So each of the individuals, there were nine, told their stories through poems, dance, song, uh, a variety of expressive arts in order to uh, make sense of what they had experienced. Uh, but because the country was also going through its own identity crisis collectively, I wanted to tie this project with the upcoming 250th anniversary of the country's founding that will happen in 2026 as a, as a means of saying that it's time to change the nation story, particularly around who we are as a country as we come home to ourselves. And so each of the young people explored their heritage, they explored how they healed through the artifacts that they chose. So in the image that you see here, this young lady used the Bible as a way of how she processed the experiences in the pandemic. Um, and the gentleman that you saw in the earlier picture was an image, was an artifact of his grandma other um, shirt that she gave him before she passed away due to COVID. And so they all were telling different stories with different artifacts and pieces. Um, and so for me, this was a really important thing to do, particularly as we come home as a country, we're going through such a major identity crisis of who we are, where we've been, and more importantly, where we're going. Wow, Matthew, thank you so much. It's so, I mean, it's so much to unpack here. Um, I wonder so on the side, you say in your, your artist statement, the digital storytelling, um, you talk about it being a mission to help people heal through remembrance. Um, was there anything that surprised you like going through this project and curating it like as an artist that you'd want to share? Uh, yeah, just just how our bodies are, our memory keepers, our libraries. And so uh, there's a level of sensitivity um, that must be taken into account in order to excavate properly um, because you don't know what's gonna actually all come up. And um, we were very mindful without this process. Uh, so before I even started this project, I had done an independent study to do the work on myself. So I had gone through the years of the pandemic 
really creating an autobiography, almost a narrative testimony to say, before I ask others to bear witness, what does this feel like in the body to go through journals, posts, uh, voice notes of all types of manners that depicted the last two, three years and try to tell a story that makes sense and made meaning of what I experienced. And as you can imagine, it's incredibly hard to excavate oneself but in doing so, it allowed me to engage with my own artistic abilities of poetry. So I was able to not only help them from a more professional sense, uh, from a technical point of view, but also from a, a more sort of lived experience of what it's like to go there with oneself and be able to tell a story from the artifacts that we keep around us. So fascinating and so powerful. And like, thank you so much for sharing these pieces with us. And I know I definitely look forward to following your story. So appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thank you very much. Oh, we're almost there. <laughs> this is the home stretch, right? All right. So I think this actually might be our last submission. So we'd like to get over to the uh, USD Gospel Choir to take us home. And then we'll get into uh, some housekeeping on uh, sort of next steps in our session. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Uh, so with that, thank you all so much. Um, I would love to hand over the stage back to Dr. Jez uh, to take us into our next segment. 
All right. And I actually want to give a shout out to Xavier, who put together that clip um, from many clips. And um, and it's you know, it's always hard to choose something when you love something so much. And, and I just want to say thank you for the work you did on that. Um, now we're going to move to our breakout time where we get to talk to our artists and we have facilitators and we also have um, our team members that are going to be in each room. Um, and before we do that, um, uh, Alyssa is going to go over our discussion agreements just so we can make sure that we're all going into the room with the same expectations. Okay, so the discussion agreements are just like to help us like figure out how to navigate this conversation because it can be kind of tense sometimes and a bit uncomfortable. Um, so pretty much the agreements we're making is to listen with intentionality and be okay with awkward silences. Um, speak your truth, share authentically and use I statements, respect confidentiality, experience or lean into discomfort, um, be mindful of time so that everyone can share. Recognize that this is unfinished work. Um, understand like everybody has different communication styles. So like respect the differences and like understand that everybody does have that difference and examine your own assumptions and perceptions. Right. Thank you. So we just have some guiding questions that we have come up with. And in your groups, we know that um, the conversation could change just as you are in there. Um, and that is not a problem. And each of our um, facilitators will be recording kind of a synopsis and we'll be able to share out. Looks like we're going to have around 15 minutes to be um, in groups. And um, so I'm excited. Well, thank you all for coming back and um, and also staying for the discussion part. Um, I, I really think that, you know, the the learning and the hearing at the beginning part is really powerful, but when we can actually get into like a smaller group and, and hear voices and perspectives, it's um, the piece to la resistance. So <laughs> thank you. Um, all right, Gabby, you're going to take us through each one of the share out groups. So there were three groups, ended up being three groups. Yeah, fantastic. So we just love to invite, um, uh representatives from each group just to share, you know, we'll give you two or three minutes for a share out on what spoke to you. Um, here are the questions. So what spoke to you from the presentations of the art? Uh, what will you take away from this event? And how will you create sustainable change in your community? So if you could comment on any of those questions, as you discussed in your group, we'd greatly appreciate it. Um, so which group would be courageous enough to go first for their share out? Who'd like to kick us off? I'm great I with awkward. I can say a few things. <laughs> so, yes. I can say a few things. Claire, if like some of it overlaps, I apologize. Um, so um, I got from you, Gabby, that telling your story from your perspective, like having that agency was like something very important. Um, and then I know Zoe mentioned like, um, like purposely well I guess I don't want to like go out of order with the questions but um I still think it's reasonable to say like Zoe mentioned purposefully like finding space to consume art or like just like create art and like just making the time for that um also I did like really like um what Zoe mentioned about Xavier which is how he said like sometimes talk therapy doesn't help with generational trauma as much and like music can help process trauma outside of like the westernized like idea of what um can heal like our, our wounds like our deep deeper wounds beautiful thank you so much Alyssa. i appreciate it um who's next who would like to share reflect Next group, come on in. Any takeaways, any thoughts? I don't know the I don't know the group number or anything like that. Um I apologize. All right. Come on in, that's all right. <laughs> um but um we really just uh talked about um 
Buck, a gentleman named Buck really uh, <laughs> spoke out uh, to me what he said um, in regards to what's going on today. That it's a fine, like um, that the Palestine is getting a lot of um, the compassion and stuff today, but they needed it 75 years ago. They needed it 100 years ago. Um, and it's, and it's typically, that's typically how it goes, um, that we don't give it the time when the time that they need it. But these groups right now help us do so. Um, the other gentleman in the group, I don't remember his name, um, but he's the one who did the Breonna Taylor photos and things of that sort. He really spoke uh, uh, in regards to why he has, why sometimes we hesitate on uh, speaking out because it comes with the, um, the negative that, that follows that. And that's crazy, right? To, um, Ryan, Ryan, his name's Ryan. Um, yeah, that's big. <laughs> that, that uh, and I understood him completely when he's saying what the speaking out sometimes, what does that look like? Because we don't want to have the uh, negative, negative connotation that comes with that. And that sucks that speaking out and being bold could be looked at as negative, but he's absolutely right. But despite that, he speaks out with his art anyway. So my big takeaway was just, you know, even though it's uncomfortable and it's not by most popular demand, uh, these guys want spoke out in the way that they that they speak and it's loud and we hear it and that's what it takes. It's, it's, it's a lot of voices together will make a scream. And that will create real, uh, a, a real vibration that we can feel. Like voice can turn into, to touch real quickly. So, uh, it's just a beautiful thing to hear and see. I love it. It sounds like your group got into a really deep discussion, and I love the power of community. It might sound, you know, like it's one voice on one island, far away. But then when you've got a thousand voices, a million voices together you know, that makes a difference and that can really, really propel a movement forward in a positive way. So we love that. Um, thank you so much. And yes, uh, Ryan, thank you for those contributions too. And Buck, um, are there other groups that would like to jump in with their reflections? I know it's the end of the night. I know it's, we're getting late, but we got a couple more fun things planned. Any other thoughts? I've heard resilience. I've heard hope, healing, the power of community, being unapologetic with, with our words, with our intentions. Dr. Jez, any thoughts? Um, I know you were popping in a couple of rooms. I and was, and I feel like Clara had a really good synopsis of her group when I was in there. And I was just wondering if maybe she would like to share a little bit, not to call you out, but <laughs> to call you out. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I think we, a lot of, a lot of the conversation that we touched on was just knowing that there is a lot of power in the arts and sometimes like I think my takeaway was personally even when I do like I, I draw art or I write pieces I don't really understand the gravity of it in terms of like I'm usually very pessimistic and I undermine the power of it but it's these platforms like this that really allow people to take a stance and express themselves and there is an effect and I think our group was really we found so many different parts of today that really stood with us. And um, we had some really good like collective action takeaways. We were thinking of how to keep the conversation going, how to every day inculcate some part of this um, where we promote this kind of expression. We were talking about the ability to take, to claim space and to do that proudly mm. without feeling the need to, you know, silence ourselves which is also really nice. Um, and yeah, I think one really important thing that we spoke about was the power of storytelling in general and to claim your narrative and to be able to share it. So be as authentic as possible um, and just take your platform. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And Matthew, not to call you out, but I also heard some really good gems from you, if you wouldn't mind sharing. <laughs> okay. And if you want me to remind you, I can remind you because I remember what you said. <laughs> yeah, you me in, I well, like when you were talking about time and getting messy. So 
Oh, well, um, well, first of all, thank you guys so much for this event and thank you for inviting me. Uh, but the, to the point you mentioned is was just about the, um, the relationship between healing and art making. Um, it's almost sort of like digging the, through the mud for water, right? It's a messy operation. And I think for anybody who's gone through any type of extreme healing, um, is someone who's recognized that once you dig enough, there will always be water and that's where the beauty lies. And so, uh, for me, that's the fun part because once you have that as a practice, as a knowing every time that you encounter circumstances that are beyond your control, you know, that if you dig deep enough, you will find water and you will make meaning out of that experience. And I think that is the gift that art gives us as humans is to make meaning out of things that somehow uh, words become just a mute for. So thank you. Thank you. That was a nice way to kind of close us off too. Um, so next we are going to have Dominic, who's going to talk about some resources. And I was actually reminded of one resource that we didn't get on the slide, but we will send this out in the follow-up email. Um, and I'm going to put it in the chat and that's our own Jacobs Institute. Um, and they right now are, um, having a, the teen innovation challenge. This is their fifth annual one where they're asking teens and teachers, uh, it's for teens and teachers working together to build a better world. And they actually have money related to the different submissions um, and everything. So if um, you could share that with your community, um, I think it's a, one of those really powerful ways of where we're actually putting our, our um, uh, money where our intentions are trying to go, but also highlighting the amazing things that are happening um, across the world. And it is a global effort. So uh, we will get that to you in our, like I said, our, our final email um, thanking everyone, but please Dominic, um, tell us about some of our community resources. Yeah. So part of this, uh, in our artist, artistic expression, Shalon is also about having community resources where you can express yourself. And there's a lot of events in, in these, uh, lush resources, uh, Barrio Logan, uh, as you heard from our uh, acknowledgement speaker, Carmen Linares, who, um, it, it's just a, a wealth of history for San Diego. Um, it is, uh, deeply in the Chicano movement, but, uh, it was also, um, a lot of history in the Chicano and African-American movement as San Diego was finding its ground in social justice. So if you haven't been there, there's a lot more pictures I wanted to put up, but I didn't want to overshadow, um, uh, Carlos, uh, you know, all of her, uh, great art because it was this was about her expression in that area and then uh in the middle is a uh a statue or a bust of uh Malcolm X uh, El Haj Malik El Shabazz uh at the Malcolm X library which is on Market Street in the center of southeast San Diego um you don't hear about southeast San Diego a lot it's an unincorporated area south of San Diego or in South San Diego but it's um between the Martin Luther King Freeway um, aligned with Euclid and Imperial Avenues. What's great about this center is um, I've done a lot of community work down there. Um, and uh, Alan Bug, the director down there, has hosted and fostered events. Uh, we will be doing events in the future down at the Malcolm X Library, but it has an idea lab, which is a creative space for teens um, with uh, music studios. Uh, um, it has a stage down there. And uh, the reason why this is uh, really, really important is because a lot of times teens can't find or young adults areas to express themselves and a wonderful library as well. So it's an educational space. There's a there's you know, it's an intersection of just a huge creative space uh, funded by the city of San Diego. And then lastly, the World Beat Center. I frequent there a lot. Um, we hope to have them on one of these events uh, led by uh, Miss Makeda Dredd. Uh, there's many, many uh, events that happen at the World Beat Center, and it's about the uh, African uh, diaspora and also West Indian, um, you know, the Caribbean. Um, every every BIPOC person should visit the World Beat, Beat Center. And even if you're not a BIPOC person, if you understand the social justice movement, because uh, it's just a, a lot of celebrations. I was down there on the last Juneteenth. I was playing um, African drums. I was eating vegan food. It was just a, 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 you know, just a lot of emotions and a, like a three-day event. So they have a lot of free events. It doesn't cost anything. 
Makeda Dredd has been running that center for, I think, a, more than a couple of decades that I've known. And um, it's it's really, really uh, interesting. It's an educational center. A lot of uh, universities, uh, uh, institutions, along with, uh, you know, our institution, but they visit down there. And I was at an event for Cornell, uh, Cornell University hosted a Juneteenth walk, a bird walk um, for Harriet Tubman. It never knew that that had anything to do with Harriet Tubman, but it, again, it's informative, it's educational, and these are just some of the resources that we wanted to share with you today. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. And I have one more resource that also came in just this afternoon. Um, as uh, Xavier had mentioned um, earlier, we realized that we needed to have an event um, around the crisis in the Middle East right now. Um, and so I put a call out to some of my colleagues across the university and I got a call in, um, from one of them and John, uh, professor John Halaka, and he actually has, um, an exhibit going on up at the Oceanside Art Museum. And I just put the link in, um, to some of his work, but I think, uh, it really, uh, is looking at, um, the experiences of displaced peoples and um, sounds really powerful. So I'm definitely going to make it up to Oceanside and uh, we'll be also sharing that in the follow-up email. Um, so now we're going to have Gabby, um, you'll introduce our faculty closer. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Jazz. So uh, we are privileged to have Dr. Sean Green, our Assistant Dean for Community Engagements and Spirituality, Mental Health, and Catholic Education Director, um, present our closing remarks and closing statement tonight. Dr. Green, over to you. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, first and foremost, I mean, it's really tough to follow all the beautiful talent that we got to see over the last hour and a half, so I'm, I'm thankful. Um, Thank you for having me today and thank you to all the artists who shared their work with us. Um, to me, art is the physical manifestation of our feelings and experiences, both positive and negative. And it's something that I feel people take for granted. Um, I do not. <laughs> My personal medium for art is music. Um, so in fact, prior to logging into this beautiful session, uh, my day has been filled with Duran Jones, Sublime, Billie Eilish, Jimi Hendrix, Migos, Rest in Peace Takeoff, and money bag yo, two Gs, no typo. Don't forget that. Um, as I'm sure you can notice, the theme here is diversity for me, not only in the diversity of the music I listen to, um, but also, also what we just witnessed. Um, and we got to witness the beauty of diversity in the art everyone shares. So it's moving to see and hear all the tremendous talent here. Um, I personally used to write actually quite a bit. So I wrote my wife's processional. I never miss an opportunity to say that <laughs> for our wedding. Um, but for fun now, I, I just write rhymes and send them to people throughout the week for smiles and just general expression. So I'm, I'm always happy to hear a spoken word and rap and poetry and all that kind of stuff. So my artistic expression at this point is silly, uh, but it is a reminder of the guts and connection to your soul that are re really required to contribute in this space. Um, so for me, though, it is also a reminder that it is a part of me and it almost hurts when I'm not able to express myself in different ways. Uh, in my office, I have a few different pieces hanging, including some shepherd fairies and Hebrew Brantleys, fake, of course, uh, but not to me. Um, for me, they speak to advocacy and social justice. Um, the shepherd fairy pieces are purposefully diverse and expressive, while the Hebrew Brantley pieces speak to beautifully forgotten communities like Bronzeville and Chicago. The last thing I will say is that hip hop is the most under underrated art form today. Um, now, don't at me on this one because uh, you can't change my mind. All right. So just that it is what it is. Um, but I will finish with a simply a powerful quote from one of my favorite poets and rappers of all time, uh, Mr. Tariq Trotter, also known as Black Thought, who says, um, as he laments on his life as a black man in America, quote, you don't see us, but we see you, unquote. Well, I see all of you and I couldn't be proud of the work you all are doing. And I'm thankful to be a part of this day. So thank you. Thank you so much and very eloquently put as always. Um, so uh, Dominic, you're going to share about uh, some of our what's next. That is amazing. Dr. Green said black thought. That's what I'm talking about. Um, the, um, what's next? Uh, so we do have a, it's going to be a, a Palestine listening session and this will be uh, to be announced. I think we're going to work out the date and uh, where we're going to have it. 
Um, but on December the 8th, we're going to do healing through uh, the arts and a reflection. We hope everyone that's here and we'll be sending out emails as well. Um, we'll come back and uh, this will be in the reading room uh, at on campus uh, on the USD campus. If you can attend, we'd really like to have you here uh, uh, at the uh, at the healing through the arts. And this is this is kind of what we do as a, you know, as an update to what we just expressed. So you can talk more so we can have more time uh, to share and care with each other. And then um, we will have more uh, in, in our advocacy series. We have more 2024 events uh, coming up and we'll get the dates together and we'll get it all out to you. But thank you everyone so very, very much. Um, this was wonderful. Thank you. Absolutely. I just put the... Um... The first flyer we're going to have, this is going to be a few flyers that are going to come out for um, one for our Middle East event um, as soon as we have come down with our, our or have um, uh, figured out our exact panel and what day based on schedules. Um, and then this is for the um, Healing Through the Arts uh, Reflection event. And it is hybrid, as Dominic said. So it will be in person, but we'll also have it online because we really do want to make sure that as many people can, uh, who want to, can be a part of that. Um, and uh, my just final thank you to all of you who um, worked to put this on and all of you who attended and all of you who are going to be listening to the recording um, and going through our virtual gallery. Um, and uh, we're just really excited to continue this. We wanted to make sure that we presented the art today so that you could then go through on your own and really interact with it um, and, and feel it. Um, and so that is why we're having the second part of this on December 8th to um, come together and talk about it. So thank you all very much. Anyone have any final finals before I hit stop record? <laughs> all right. Well, then have a great evening. And yeah. I